Hi, welcome to RK University Online Classes. In this lecture, I am going to explain you various lexicals that we use in operating and financial leverage. Understanding these words or vocabulary is very important and which makes calculation of operating leverage and financial leverage as well as combined leverage easy. We'll spend some time in understanding various lexicals used in the context of leverages. Here are the key lexicals that we use in the context of leverage. One is the sales. So the sales in amount will get as product of selling price per unit times number of units sold. So for example, if the selling price per unit is rupees 10 and you sold 1000 units, then your sales is 10,000. This is one. Next is the variable cost. Variable costs vary according to the number of units that you produce. In the sense they grow or they increase linearly with the number of units produced. That means, suppose if you produce uh, one unit and if it costs rupees 5, then if you produce 10 units, then it, it will cost you 5 into 10 that is 50. So that means the variable cost has a linearity gradually it grows as your number of units sold increases. Now how is that we are going to calculate the variable cost is so your variable cost this equals to variable cost per unit times number of units sold. So that means if your variable cost is rupees 5 and uh, you sold 1000 units then this is 5000. So rupees 5000 is your variable cost. The third one is fixed cost. So this fixed cost remain constant irrespective of the number of units that you produce. In the sense fixed cost will not vary according to the volume of output or volume of a sales. In the sense we can say that if a fixed cost is rupees 10,000 then it remains the same irrespective of the number of units that you sold. So fixed cost is denoted as a, a straight line. In the sense this remains a constant. So in operating leverage we are going to use the concept of a fixed cost. Then you have a contribution. Contribution is sales minus variable cost. In our example here, we have a sales of rupees 10,000 and a variable cost of rupees 5,000. So your contribution is rupees 5,000. Rupees 5,000 is the contribution. Next is contribution per unit. So when we talk about a contribution per unit, we will take the selling price per unit as well as variable cost per unit. So our contribution per unit is selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit. In our example, the selling price is rupees 10, whereas variable cost is rupees 5. So your contribution per unit is rupees 5. Then comes the PV ratio. PV ratio is also called profit volume ratio. So profit volume ratio measures the relationship between contribution and sales. So that is, and if you want a PV ratio in a percentage, you need to multiply this with 100. In our example, the contribution is rupees 5000, whereas sales are rupees 10,000. So our PV ratio is 0.5 or 50%. Now to get a PV ratio in, in terms of a per unit, then your contribution per unit is rupees 5 upon selling price per unit is rupees 10. So this also gives you the same that is 50 percent. So this is a PV ratio. Then comes your EBIT earnings before interest and tax. Your EBIT earnings before interest and tax also called operating profit. So your operating profit is this equals to sales minus variable cost minus fixed cost. Let us say in our example, our uh, sales are rupees 10,000, variable cost is rupees 5,000, and assuming that the fixed cost is rupees 2,000, 
then your EBIT is 3000. So this is earnings before interest and tax. And then you have a earnings before tax. So earnings before tax is earnings before interest and tax minus interest. Assuming that this company borrowed a loan on which it pays rupees 1000 as interest, rupees 1000 interest. So in that case, your EBT that is earnings before tax is 3000 is the EBIT minus interest amount is rupees 1000. So this gives you a value of a 2000. So the EBT that is earnings before tax is 2000. Then you have earnings after tax. Now earnings after tax is earnings before tax minus tax amount. Let us say this company is in a tax bracket of a 30%. Now your earnings before tax is 2000 and on this 30% will go as a tax. So that means 30 by 100. So this equals to 600 is the tax. So earnings after tax is 2000 minus 600. So this equals to 1400 is earnings after tax. If there are no preference shareholders and no preference dividend is paid, then earnings available to common shareholders is equals to earnings after tax. If there are preference shareholders, then earnings available to common shareholders equals to earnings after tax minus preference dividend. And finally, you will have a EPS. EPS is earnings per share. Earnings per share. So this equals to earnings available to common shareholders or equity shareholders upon number of common shares. Assuming that our company has got a common shares of 100, then your EPS is earnings available to equity shareholders is 1400. So this is a 1400 and number of a common shares. Let us take an example of 100 common shares are there. So your common shares are 100. Then EPS is 14. Earnings per share is a rupees 14. So these are the very important uh, uh, concepts which we are going to use repeatedly in the context of operating and financial leverage as well as a capital structure decisions even in a dividend decisions also. So you need to be very familiar with all these concepts that is the sales, how is that we are going to calculate the sales and what is the variable cost and what is the fixed cost and what's its nature. Then a contribution, contribution per unit, PV ratio, especially this, these concepts that is the sales, variable cost, fixed cost, contribution and contribution per unit and PV ratio we are going to use in a break even analysis also as well as in EBIT EPS analysis as well as in a other uh, financial management concepts. So getting familiar with these concepts is very important. Thank you. Thank you for watching the lecture.